All right, I asked on the Pre-Med Consultants Instagram account for some pre-med questions, so I'm gonna answer uh, one of those in this video. So the first question I got says, as a Cornell student, uh, I was a Cornell student as well, you can see there, I have the proof, uh, what GPA must I obtain in order to even have a chance to be accepted? All right, so this is a good question, and GPA is, one of those factors that most pre-med students are very concerned about. They want to know what's that threshold number that you need to hit to be able to get into medical school, if not dropping out. Well, the reality is there is no magic number that you need to get to get into medical school. So no matter what your GPA is, you should not drop pre-med just because it's not as good as you'd think. I, I literally know people at Cornell with me who just dropped out after they had like a 3.3 or a 3.4 because they thought there's no way they were going to cut it. And that's not true. You can still get into medical school with those GPAs. Or if you're not happy with your GPA, which, you know, if you have a 3.3 and you know you could do better, a post back program would be a good option to work on improving that GPA. So again, there's no magic number. Now, some schools may have internal cutoffs. They're usually lower than you might think because they really do want to look at other aspects of the application, your MCAT score, your extracurriculars, your personal statement and who you are as a person all these factors really do come into play so there is no gpa that you need to hit let's say that guarantees you acceptance or gets you in the door with that said i would shoot for the highest gpa possible i know that i tell all my students in our pre-med consultants advising program that you should be striving for a 4.0 every single semester and by shooting high and aiming for the stars even if you land a little bit short let's say you then get a 3.7 gpa that semester that's still great just by setting your goals higher and really working towards it not just like arbitrary being like oh i'm gonna get a 4.0 but really working towards getting that 4.0 GPA every semester, you will see that your grades will start to improve. So again, shoot for the highest GPA you can. I like to tell students, you know, a 3.5 or above is great. 3.7 and above it is even better. Um, but if you're above a 3.5 GPA, especially with science GPA as well, you can definitely apply to medical school. Now the question becomes, I know a lot of Cornell students ask this. Some of the Cornell classes have a pretty hard curve. Do they factor in, for example, if you're at a harder institution or do they factor in if you're an engineer and the average grades of engineering students are usually a lot lower than some of the pre-med uh, like health science majors and things like that. The reality is they do a little bit, but it's not significant enough to make a difference. So what I mean by that is if you're deciding to be an engineer, a bioengineer as a major, and you're only doing it because you think it looks good for medical school, you're probably better off doing another major that the class will be easier and you're gonna get much higher grades. The blow to your GPA because you took a really hard major and didn't do as well, the juice is not worth the squeeze there. Now, if you wanna be a bioengineer and you have very specific reasons for going into it, it does play a really good narrative on your, your apps, but I wouldn't do it just because you think it looks good. And yes, the schools will understand that you had a harder major, but I'd rather you get a 3.9 at an easier major than a 3.2 as an engineer. Same thing goes for if you're at a hard school versus an easier school. It depends on the discrepancy. Like if you have a 3.9 at Cornell, will that look a little bit better than maybe a 4.0 at an easier school or 3.9 at an easier school? Yes. But if you have a 3.0 at Cornell versus a 3.8 at an easier school, well, that 3.8 is going to look better. So again, that's kind of some of the common questions people like to ask about GPA and how does it look to the admissions committee. Again, every admissions committee will view the GPAs differently. Some schools, what they'll even do is they'll look at your GPA uh, only from the last certain amount of credit. So they might cut out, for example, your freshman year entirely because they know a lot of people struggle in their freshman year and they might compare, you know, what was their total GPA and what's their total GPA when I cut out freshman year, just to see these types of things. That's why we talk about that upward trend is very important. So if you have a bad year, you have a bad two years, it's okay. It's not too late to improve your GPA. Always can make improvements to your grades, your application, and you should never give up on your dreams of going to medical school if that's really what you want. You got to decide, are you doing it for you? Do you really want to be a doctor? Have you put in the time? Have you done the shadowing, the clinical to really know this is for you? And if that's the case, don't give up just because you might have done bad in a couple classes, one semester, or even a year, even two years, okay? I've literally seen people who had a terrible four years of college, and then we worked with them 
help them get into medical school. So if you are interested, if you feel like you need that extra help and you want to speak with either it's going to be myself or someone from our team about you know where you're at in the process and if the pre-med consultants advising program, which helps you with basically everything until you get into medical school. So that's going to be your classes. If you still need the MCAT and admissions, uh, click the link below and you can schedule a call and we'll see how we can help you and, and send you some other resources. All right. Hope you got some value from this video and I'll see you in the next one.